Hi, I'm Jim Stonis and I'm an RV travel writer. Even though I like to boondock, I like running water, I like lights, I like a fan, I like TV with satellite in the evening sometimes, and that depends on the batteries. The amount of battery storage you have, the more power you can use. There are three things to consider when preparing for boondocking. One, the amount of battery storage that you have. Two, how are you going to store it? How are you going to fill it? When you're filling it, I'm talking about charging it from solar panels. Today we're going to install a solar panel kit. This is a 130 watt solar charging kit from Samlex Solar. It comes complete as all their kits do, complete with enough stuff for the basic installation. You have your panel with a good warranty, you have a 30 amp charge controller, you have the wires needed to reach the batteries, and you have the mounting brackets and the hardware for the roof. In preparation for installing the panel, we should put on the accompanying hardware. These Z brackets are the feet that space the solar panel from the roof. Now I would suggest they have got room here for one one bowl. I would suggest drilling another hole and putting an extra bowl in so that this is not able to rotate when you're trying to handle it on the roof. If you bump something, you don't want it turning at an angle. If you're going to drill a hole, remember to put a piece of steel or something under here so you don't go through and penetrate the, the at the solar panel. I just want to get through this outer steel. Now that's what comes with the kit. I would suggest that as an optional point to buy, you uh, purchase these brackets that allow you to tilt your solar panel up to the sun. 90 degrees to the sun is the best. And you'll be surprised at how much more energy you're going to get from it when you do that. If you don't want to climb to the roof, then just leave it with the flat Z brackets. Now we've got the three necessary items for our installation. We've got a good battery bank. We've got a kit. A kit that provides us with a solar panel. A kit that provides us with a charge controller. And I suggest this option as well. This is a battery temperature sensor. It allows the um, charge controller to sense the temperature of the battery. In cold or in hot weather, this will increase the charging or decrease it depending on the temperature. The 30 amp solar charge controller from Samlex Solar is one to do the job. It's able to handle up to 30 amps. It has eight settings that will handle many different battery types. It works with 12 or 24 volt systems and it has a battery equalization function. The 30 amp solar charge controller from Samlex Solar senses the battery level of the batteries. Tapers back on the current as the batteries reach full charge. Some older, cheaper voltage regulators never completely do charge a battery as they cut off too soon. Once the battery is fully charged, a float charge or a low current is continued to, carry, to hold the batteries at their peak. The equalization function can be set up at certain intervals, so it will automatically handle that at certain intervals. Or you can turn that function off and just equalize when you think it's necessary. The controller should be installed in a place where it's not in direct sunlight, where it's not too enclosed because it does uh, create some heat and that has to be radiated away. The uh, radiation for the heat is in the front face of the controller. 
couple of things to be careful about. These panels start generating electricity as soon as they're in the sun or in the light. To keep any sparks or damage to the panel, you should tape a cardboard over them when they're in the light until you have the installation finished. A good piece of cardboard is the one that comes with it. Simply take your magic marker, mark a line all the way around it, cut it up, lay it over the panel, black tape it on there, and then when you're working with this, whether it's in the tilted mode or whether it's laying flat, you'll have no electricity coming down through to the charge controller. The next thing you need to consider is where are you going to put this on the roof? Some motorhomes, some RVs have lots of real estate, some don't. There's panels, pipes, and other, maybe other solar panels there. If you've got your panel, your cardboard cut out, you can take it to the roof, lay it on the roof, and uh, see where it would fit the best. And then you're ready to carry your panel to the roof. After you've determined where you're going to put it, and after you've got your brackets installed, whether it's the Z mount or the tilt mount, you, you lay it on the, on the roof, you take a marker, and you mark through whichever hole seems appropriate on the roof. Mark it a nice circle because you're going to have to drill a hole. I like to mark it and then make a hole in the, make a uh, small drill hole in the center of my mark. And then I can follow it up with a, a larger drill and a larger drill. That stops uh, some roofs that are fiberglass maybe from shattering a little bit more than if you just drill a half inch hole in the beginning. Now what's going to go into those holes? And I'll show you later. This little device is called a well nut. You drill the half inch hole, you put it down into the roof, one for each hole, and that means it's going to be under the base, it's going to be in here somewhere when it's upside down, and it's going to be down flush with the roof. You may want to put some caulking in there first. Some, it shouldn't need it, but some people do it. And then when you have it in place, this little gadget has a nut inside. And when you put the thread in, the bolt in the thread, and you start tightening it, it begins to squeeze. And it will swell up until it's tight in the hole. And if it's down past the hole, the lower part will flare out and actually give you more group grip on the roof. It's kind of like the old uh, rubber corks you used in the thermos and you flip the top over and it, it, it's tight in the hole then. When you're getting ready to put your panel on the roof, not only do you have to figure out where it's going to go because of space limitation, you have to decide where you can find a wire route down through to the charge controller. <coughs> That's not always easy because some walls have cross studs in them, but somewhere in your rig you should be able to find a hollow wall that goes all the way to the roof. Or maybe you want to come down by the vent pipe. Others come down by the refrigerator. On this rig, the refrigerator was no help. It comes to a dead end and there's no way to get to the batteries. There's no way to get to where I would put the charge controller. Instead, I came down past the side of a vent pipe. And that led me down through a hollow partition. I was able to cut a hole in the wall and install the charge controller from Samlex. That works out very well, if you can do that, provided there is now a route from the, the controller down through to the battery. And so the other thing to work fine before you start all of this, how are you going to run the wires and how are you going to get to the battery? Although it's not in the kit, I would strongly suggest that you use some sort of a fuse in the line and probably an off-on switch, although some 
uh, installers simply use the off the fuse, pull the fuse, and then that's their off on switch. But I prefer a hard switch, and then you know it's off. But that should probably be in the line. Makes it simpler for doing uh, maintenance work at some time. Here we have the installation almost complete. Here we have the charge controller installed in the edge of a cupboard. The route to the batteries is straight down and just below. Sandlex provide you with an excellent set of manuals for each and each and every piece that you buy from them. In addition, they have a good website. And you can find all this stuff on the website, including things you never thought of probably. Worth reading those manuals before you start the installation.